Is the Security and Exchange Commission attempting to prolong the case on purpose? What is it that the Security and Exchange Commission is attempting to conceal in those emails? Will we be able to have a look at the emails of the Hinman speech draft? Stay tuned till the end of the video to find out. But first, we are giving away 50 XRP coins at the end of the month to one random subscriber to start on their XRP journey. All you need to do is to like the video, subscribe and comment your thoughts on XRP in the comment section. Welcome back XRP Army. Let's grow the XRP Lab community by pressing the like button and subscribing to this channel to stay updated at all times. The Securities and Exchange Commission said that Bill Hinman's remark was his personal viewpoint. He even went so far as to write an affidavit to that regard. The court acknowledged this as fact, which means that any papers relating to that speech are no longer protected as privileged information. The Security and Exchange Commission, on the other hand, seems to be doing a complete 180-degree turn. In a nutshell, to defend itself against Ripple efforts to make the fair notice claim stick, the Security and Exchange Commission counsel contended Bill Hinman's 2018 statement was purely his personal view, which was rejected by the court a few months back. Judge Sarah Nett Byrne recognized the Security and Exchange Commission assertion as accurate, and in her most recent judgment, the court determined that the drafts and emails pertaining to his speech were not confidential, and so ordered the Security and Exchange Commission to disclose them to Ripple Defense Team for review. And in a recent court ruling, Judge Sarah Nett Byrne issued her orders on the grounds that the precedent-setting nature of the case, as well as the substantial public interest in the matter, were sufficient reasons to support the disclosure of many of the documents that the Security and Exchange Commission had attempted to keep protected under the DPP. After all, the Security and Exchange Commission claims that the speech was not merely incidental to real policy making, but rather constituted an essential link in the Security and Exchange Commission deliberation process with regard to cryptocurrencies and other digital assets. A complete 180-degree turn. James Phelan, an attorney and member of the XRP community, noted in his most recent tweet, in a text-only order, Judge Nett Byrne granted in part the Security and Exchange Commission request for an extension of time in connection with the review of her DPP ruling. To that end, the Securities and Exchange Commission has requested that the case be postponed until February 17, 2022, while the plaintiff drafts a move for partial reconsideration of the deliberative process privilege, DPP finding, which was imposed by Judge Sarah Nett Byrne in December. Specifically, the Security and Exchange Commission intends to file a 20-page brief and submit additional documents for the court in camera review in support of the motion to reconsider the court ruling on one single aspect of the order, the drafts and emails in connection with former Security and Exchange Commission Director Bill Hinman's speech on June 14, 2018. Probably there is any potentially damaging data related to that. But the Security and Exchange Commission has returned with the following statement. Hey, we want you to think about it again. You have to wonder, at this point, how hard they are pushing for this and what it is that they are concealing, what it is that is so damning in there that they do not want Ripple or anybody else to find out about it. James Phelan tweeted that, the order stipulates the following, the Security and Exchange Commission request has been partially granted. The Security and Exchange Commission must submit any motions for reconsideration by February 17, 2022, and the defendants must respond by February 25, 2022, if they want to be considered. There are no response briefs permissible. Briefs should not exceed 10 pages double-spaced, and the redactions in the publicly filed versions should be kept to a bare minimum. In addition to its motion, the Security and Exchange Commission may submit up to 10 additional papers for in-camera consideration. This means that the time for any party to submit an objection to District Judge Torres from the court's January 13, 2022, opinion and order will be extended until 14 days after a judgment on the petition for reconsideration is rendered. The court approved Ripple application to force the Security and Exchange Commission to disclose those papers, citing the case novelty and precedent-setting character, as well as the large amount of public interest in the matter. When it came to responding to Judge Nett Byrne decision on the DPP case, the Security and Exchange Commission had two options. One option was to ask Judge Nett Byrne to reconsider her decision, and another was to submit objections to the judgment directly with the Court of Appeals, which is essentially the same as filing an appeal with the Court of Appeals. And Judge Nett Byrne initial or any other judge ruling can be appealed, 
and the request for reconsideration and objections must be submitted within 14 days after that decision. As a result, the Security and Exchange Commission is requesting that Judge Torres allow the Security and Exchange Commission to submit its objections directly with Judge Torres until 21 days after Judge Ned Byrne decides on the petition for reconsideration has been granted. The Security and Exchange Commission is doing all it can to avoid having to send up the records to Ripple. Will Ripple be able to get these emails? What are your thoughts? In addition, David Schwartz, Chief Technology Officer of Ripple Labs, expressed his thoughts on the Security and Exchange Commission's surprising action. The Security and Exchange Commission respectfully submits that these additional documents clarify the truly deliberative nature of the discussion surrounding the speech across the Security and Exchange Commission and demonstrate that the speech was not merely peripheral to actual policy formulation, but was in fact a essential link in the Security and Exchange Commission deliberative process with respect to Ether and other digital assets, as shared Security and Exchange Commission Director Bill Hinman. I choked on my Diet Coke as I read this, David Schwartz said, sharing a photo of one specific paragraph. And thus, the Security and Exchange Commission requests permission to submit the whole collection of 66 papers for in-camera examination. And Ripple, as predicted, submitted a response to the Securities and Exchange Commission request to extend by three weeks the deadline for filing a move for reconsideration of Judge Net Burns' DPP finding. The Ripple team expressed dissatisfaction with the amount of time that had elapsed since the Security and Exchange Commission first declined to send over the records, over a year ago. Ripple has the right to see these materials in order to prepare its defenses against the Security and Exchange Commission allegations. Any further delay in order to enable the Security and Exchange Commission to submit fresh or more information or to raise new arguments that are clearly inappropriate on a move for reconsideration would only serve to disadvantage the defendant's position. In response to the Security and Exchange Commission claims, Ripple said that a move for reconsideration may not be used to introduce new facts, problems, or arguments that have not previously been brought before the court. Meanwhile, XRP holders attorney John Deaton has already said that he would launch a Freedom of Information Act request in order to have access to Hinman emails and drafts as well. Do you think we will have an opportunity to read over those emails? Please share your views in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Kindly note that the prices of cryptocurrencies frequently change. So by the time you watch this video, it might have changed to a whole new value. The information provided in this video does not constitute investment advice, financial advice, trading advice, or any other sort of advice, and you should not treat any of the content as such. The content in this video is for educational purposes only and hence should not be considered financial advice. Do conduct your due diligence and consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions.